it's summer rain and Kipicha, and we are doing a couple special episodes out here, outdoors, in our community garden. And I got a lot of questions recently about my little foster hen, Kipicha, and I typically bring her out here to the community garden, but I'll tell you a little story of how I got her in the first place. So as some of you know, I've taken a little bit more of my plant love from indoors, outdoors, into the community garden. And I was on the wait list for a community garden space and I've been really looking to grow food outdoors because it's a little bit more challenging to do that in the home unless you're kind of growing microgreens. I grew some small potatoes and some sweet potato starts. But I love the idea of actually doing all of the starts indoors. So I started an incubator and um, for seeds and have started to now actually grow things out in my community garden space. But how I got Kipicha it's a different story because I joined the community garden and somebody took it upon themselves to put inhumane rat traps, so those ones with glue in the community garden, never do that. I mean, it didn't even catch rats. It caught, unfortunately, a little wild bird, an oven bird. And I took that oven bird up to the wild bird fund. So if you're in New York, look up the wild bird fund. They really do tremendous work. They're the only rehabilitation center in New York City to rehabilitate squirrels that may have fallen out of the nests, you know, wild birds, and also foster birds or orphan birds like Kipicha, which is how I got her. She ended up jumping on my lap. Um, she's definitely very much a people's chicken, and I decided to foster her in my home and in the garden. And the ultimate goal was to get her a, a bit of a home. So um, I just got an email today that the Brooklyn Grange Farm may actually take her. So uh, this is really marvelous. So later this week, I'm going to, to see if, um, if uh, she acclimates well to the other birds, which is lovely, but I also feel a little bit sad as well. So I, I do hope it works out because I think she'll be happy with all the other chickens, but she seems to be very happy as well, kind of in my care and in the garden. But the reason why I bring her up, multiple different reasons. One, you got to learn about the Wild Bird Fund. So if you ever find a, a, a hurt bird or um, squirrel or chipmunk or whatever, you know where to bring them um, in New York City. But also um, the idea of animals and plants. And um, I got a lot of questions, and forgive me because I don't have my little handy dandy pink book where I collate all the questions, but I do get a lot of questions about pets and plants and how do those two coexist together. And I know at least just from having Kipicha in my home because I hadn't had animals for a long time since I was a young girl. But Kipicha is a little terrorist when it comes to plants in the home. And I have now different plants that have been, the tops have been eaten off of, um, off of them. She loves my snake plants, my Sansevierias. So I all, have, all of a sudden have Sansevierias that have like no tips, which is, if you know in plants, the tip is really the growing part of the plant. Um, so it's a problem because it often prevents them um, growing in plants. Now, um, I think if you have animals, there's this idea that you know the animal will probably coexist with your plants and your plants are just not going to look as nice as if they were in a pristine environment without plants. When you have cats or dogs, as I had growing up, there's other ways to kind of deter them. So we always used to have a little spray bottle. Sometimes you could use citrus spray, but sometimes water is just enough. And so if a cat jumps on a platform where a plant is, oftentimes we get the spray bottle and spray her or him so that there's this kind of like reinforcement that that's probably not a good idea. Um, the other element that I did with Kipicha is actually I gave, I went to the farmer's market and bought wheatgrass. So that's, you know, a temporary solution where you know, she could actually peck away at some plants. I bring her out to the community garden and she like pecks at some random green plants out here. And uh, I know you can't do that oftentimes with a cat or dog, but you can buy wheatgrass. They, it's, it's pretty regularly available. Or you can grow it in your home and have them eat that, hopefully instead. The other op options are keeping them up high. So if you can hang plants, plants that hang down, if you can hang them from your windowsill as opposed to having them on the windowsill where your maybe your cats like to sit. Um, and then also doing terrariums and other things that kind of keep them behind a little bit more glass containers. Even if it's an open-based terrarium, then your dog or cat is less likely to eat it. So in a way, it's trying to then say, okay, well, what kind of plant could operate in my environment with the animals that I particularly have? 
I have to laugh because my chicken is so afraid of the birds that sparrows that fly overhead and so she gets a little like nervous and so she's running around like a crazy little bird over here um, so you know obviously I don't have that option because I had my plants before I had my bird so it's not as if I'm going to put all my plants in a terrarium that's just not practical but I think some of the more practical solutions is one you know um, trying to trying to train them not to do it for chickens it might be a little bit harder than a cat or dog I have to say since I've had all of them um, growing up most of my life including chickens but never chickens like in the home um, and uh, and containing them like I have her I have a little coop indoors for her now that she's kind of contained within that area and I like I said bought her wheatgrass and I also gave her my ponytail palm so I sacrificed my ponytail palm for my for my little chicken um, and I think plants like that that have like little interesting bits and bobs like a ponytail palm because it comes out and it has like these little like string like things cats animals will just be like really attracted to that kind of stuff um, so if you could put them in terrariums put them up do a little citrus spray or even a water spray to kind of deter um, that type of habit then I think that you're kind of probably going to be better off um, a lot of questions as in regards to what plants are not toxic or poisonous to animals. I don't know many stories actually of animals eating plants and then um, getting sick on them. Um, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen, but a lot, of, you have to understand like plants, most plants produce some type of phytotoxin within their system because if you're rooted to the ground, you're going to want to have some level of protection. Cacti is different perhaps because they have these like tricky spines. So I joked with somebody, I think it was on YouTube, they said, well, what kind of plants can I get with a cat? And I'm like, and, and, and that, that bites plants. And I was like, we'll have a plant that bites back like a cacti. Um, and you know, in a way it's kind of a funny remark, but at the end of the day, maybe the cacti is the best thing that could teach your little pussy cat a lesson. Um, but most plants do produce some type of toxin and sometimes plants will not be to so toxic, but then they could produce more phytotoxins if they are being munched on by some type of creature, whether that is an insect or whether that's a mammal or something else. That is the way that, that plants kind of um, are able to, plants in general, are able to protect themselves. So when I talked to a garden center about this like years ago, they, they said, you know, all plants basically are toxic to a certain degree. Um, and uh, so I would I would say that if you wanted things that you know would probably not be toxic to your plant um, to your animals if they eat them and I would say you know look at the things that aren't toxic to us I mean we eat herbs um, you know those could be some things if they by chance get them but then you know that limits you um, tremendously I have things like euphorbia milii which will give you skin rashes and disorders and it's probably not good um, to eat and and far other plants but it doesn't necessarily mean your animal is going to ingest it and eat it sometimes they just want to like gnaw on it and spit it out like in the case of my chicken um, so anyway I wouldn't let that necessarily deter you from from getting interesting um, interesting plants and if you are you're concerned about it then I would say put them up higher put them out of reach same thing with children put them out of reach if you possibly can and you just have to take in some more precautions and more um, and, and consider the more of complexity of the situation by getting plants or having small children around so hopefully that answers your question I'm very glad that Kipicha made a little cameo appearance here and thank you again for all of your questions and all of your queries about the chicken as well take care until next time and be sure to subscribe to plant went on me here and follow along on YouTube, Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn and other places. Bye.